How do you get better at math? People always ask me how to get better. What book do I buy? What book do I read? What videos do I watch? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get better at math. And really, the steps that you need to follow in order to get better are not that difficult. The secret is about just following those steps and just doing it. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing you have to do is get a book. So I'm going to pick this one. And the reason I'm picking this one is because this is a book that is very easy to get. It's probably not that expensive, and there's lots of books like it. So this is the one by Stuart, Redlin, and Watson, and it's a book on algebra and trig, and it's the second edition. So it's just a random book on algebra and trig. So if you're watching this video, you probably have to take some algebra and maybe some trig. And if you have to take calculus, this is stuff you have to know anyways. So this is a good first choice. Okay, let's take a look at this book. You can find a book like this really inexpensively. They really are not that expensive. If you go online and you search for used books, you should be able to find an algebra and trig book, and again, it doesn't have to be this one, for less than $10. I'm pretty sure I paid less than $10 for this book. Yep, look, it even says used still. I tried to take the sticker off, but I couldn't. Okay, let's open it up. If you were able to do like 20% of the problems in each section in this book, you would become super good at mathematics. Just gonna go through all the topics here so you can see. So there's all kinds of topics in here. And so the way to get started is to first pick a section. I'm gonna pick 6.1, angle measure, because this is typically the first section that's taught in a trig course. So it's page 448, let's go there right now. Okay, so you have your book, you have your section. So now what you do is you just sit down and read through the book. And the thing is, as you read through it, you're gonna run into difficulties. And you should know it's normal. You're not going to understand everything. Now this particular section is very easy, but there are some topics in this section that usually cause problems. In fact, they're right here. For most people, this is the hardest thing in, in this section. The reason I know that is because I've taught this course in the past, and that's where people get stuck, right? This is the part that's always stuck. I also took this course long ago, and that's the part where I got stuck. So that's probably the hardest thing in the section for most people. But that's okay. You just keep reading and you don't worry about it, right? It's normal to get stuck. Then, when you get to the end of the section, you get to the problems. So now the learning really begins. You've read through the section, you're confused about a couple things, and now it's time to do problems. So the way to do it is to start doing the problems, and then if you get stuck on a certain problem, you want to look back in that section for examples like that problem. Now, if you can't find examples like that problem, it's okay, you just move on to another problem. You can look for more resources online, or you can look on other books, but for the sake of saving time, let's just assume that you skip those problems and you only do problems that have examples that are similar in the book. For example, you should be able to do problems like this because I'm pretty sure there's examples like this. When you're done doing these problems, you can look in the back of the book. Let's do that right now. So here you see the back of the book and you see it has answers to the odd numbered problems. So that's super useful. It would be nice if you had answers to all of the problems. Sometimes, not always, if you get an instructor's edition of the book, you do have answers to all the problems. So again, for the sake of just simplicity, let's assume you don't get that, you just get a regular book. Pretty much every algebra and trig book that's relatively modern is going to have answers to the odd number problems. So you can check your answer in the back of the book, which is awesome. Then you just keep going and you keep doing that for all of the problems. And again, you're gonna run into situations where you get to problems that don't have examples in the book. For example, I'm sure some of these word problems are not in the book uh, like that. What's going on there, right? the tethered cow. I doubt there's an example of that in the book. So you can try to do it. However, it's number 76, so you won't be able to check your answer. So let's, let's say you wanted to do 77. You could try to do that one and try to figure it out on your own. You might be able to do it, and the good news is you can check your answer. So you win some, you lose some, right? You're not expected to learn everything in this section using this method. You're just expected to learn what you can. And then you go to the next section and you repeat the process. The really good thing about books like this, these algebra and trig books, is that they have so many topics. For example, this is section 10.5, and it's on the algebra of matrices. So if you're working on trig and you're feeling defeated and you're just, you can't get yourself to do it, or maybe you're working on algebra and you're just tired of that, you could find other stuff in here like matrix algebra. Perform the matrix operation, or if it is impossible, explain why. So you can learn to add matrices, subtract them, multiply them if possible, etc. You can learn all kinds of math with one of these books, and again, they're really not that expensive if you're not picky about the edition and the author. There are so many math books out there, and they're so affordable if you know where to look.
A lot of these math books have really cool historical notes. Here it talks about Galois. Galois was a famous mathematician who was known for creating Galois theory. So as you're doing your math, you can read about these famous mathematicians, and it's really quite interesting. Galois died very young, and it was a very, very sad story. If you're already taking a math class and you already have a book for your class, there is a chance it's an ebook. So again, my advice is to go out and get another book, or maybe the same book if you can find it, used and inexpensively. This way you can sit down at your desk or your kitchen table or wherever you have a solid surface. You can have your book here and your paper here, and you can work out math problems using this method. This is the section on complex numbers. This is another really simple topic that most people should be able to learn, right? It's really not that hard. Here it talks about finding the real and imaginary parts of the complex number. It's very, very easy to do. The real part is the five. The imaginary part is the negative seven. It's just the number in front of the I. Very, very easy. So here it's negative six. That's the real part. Four is the imaginary part. Super, super easy, right? So once you learn how to do stuff like that, it's really not that bad. Here it talks about adding complex numbers and subtracting, multiplying. Again, very easy stuff that you can learn on your own. And all you have to do is read the section, try to do the problems, look back to the section when you get stuck, and then just check your answers in the back of the book. People always say that math is not a spectator sport. You learn math by actually doing math, and that's very, very true. It's really easy to watch a math video, and I am, of course, a proponent of math videos because I make math videos, so I am totally for math videos. However, at the same time, it's way, way better, in my opinion, to actually read the book, understand what you can, and then again, realize you're not gonna understand all of it, and then just sit down and try to actually do the problems, and then check your answers in the back of the book. And if you just set a goal, like maybe, I don't know, five, 10 problems a day, just to start, it's better than nothing. I always tell myself that whenever I'm doing something, it's better than nothing. It really is, you know, if you do five problems a day from this book or from any other algebra and trig book, it's better than nothing. Okay, I'm gonna put the book back on my bookshelf and that will be it. So that's how anyone can learn math. Again, you just have to buy a book and then just read through it and start doing problems. And again, this one is a good example because it's just a regular book. It's not a teacher's edition. It's used, it's old. James Stewart, by the way, was a famous mathematician. He also wrote a great calculus book, uh, which is widely used today. You know, same thing with that book. You know, you read through it, understand what you can, do some problems, and then check your answers. You won't be able to understand everything when you read these math books, but you'll be able to understand something. And you'll come out of it knowing more than you knew before you went in. So always remember that, right? If you do 10 problems a day, that's better than doing no problems a day. I hope this video has been helpful. And remember, anyone can learn math. You can too. Good luck.